In this particular lecture, let's work on making this to do app functional by accepting the to do items from this input. So we have already implemented a to do list application in which we have learned how to make use of the use state hook to go ahead and capture this particular input field and also how to make use of use state to create a to do list array. So that's exactly what we will be doing in this case as well. But we are going to do it in a slightly different way. So in that particular case, what we had done is that we had actually created the use state inside the form itself. So for example, uh, we have created the to do state here and the to do list state over here as well. And then we simply went ahead, caught the data from the form and simply added that new state data over there. However, now you need to understand that here we are working with the component based architecture in which we are going to break down our application into multiple components. So for example, right now, what would happen is that let's say if you just create the state here, if you create the to do list here, that to do list will be only accessible to this form and any components which are nested inside this form. And what we wish to do is that once that particular form data is submitted, we want to create a new components to display all of those list items. So the question becomes how to pass that data from the form components to that other component, which is the to do list component that becomes a problem. And in order to avoid that particular problem, what we do is that we don't declare the to do list here. Instead, we create a to do list inside app.js write up over here. And that's because once we have created that particular to do list state here, or simply the to do list here, we can actually pass down that to do list to the form as well as we could pass that to do list to the to do list component as well, which we are going to create here. And the reason why we are able to do that is because that particular component, which is the to do list component is going to be nested inside this app component. So right now we have the app component and the header and the form are nested in it. So that means if I go ahead and create a to do list here, I could simply pass up that to do list to this particular form as a prop and I could make use of that to do list over here. So that is quite simple. So now let's learn how exactly to do that. So first of all, I'll go ahead and I'll create state here or create state using the use state hook. So in order to create that, I'll go inside the function and I would say const. And for now, first of all, let's make a state for accepting a single to do item. So here I would say to do. And then along with it, I would also create a function called as set to do, which would change the to do item. So I would say this equals use state. And for now, let's initialize it to an empty string. So once we have that, we are pretty much good to go. Now in a similar fashion, let's also create a to do list as well. So I would say const that's going to be to do list. And then I would say set to do list. This is going to be also equal to use state, but this one is going to be an empty array instead of being an empty string. So once we have these two things, let's also make sure that you import use state as well. So I would say import that's going to be use state from that's going to be react. And once we have imported that we are pretty much good to go. So now once we have imported this, we now need to pass in all of these things to the form so that we could work with them. Now in order to pass them, we actually need to pass them as props or properties. So whenever you want to pass in props to any component, you simply go ahead and you type in the name of the prop. So let's say first, I want to pass in the to do item which we have here. So I would say to do equals and then in curly brackets, I would say to do. So just as we have passed in to do, let's also pass in the set to do method or the set to do function, the to do list as well as the set to do list function as well. So in order to pass them, I would simply say set to do equals set to do. Then I would say to do list equals nothing but to do list. And then finally, let's also pass in the set to do list function as well. Okay, so once everything is passed in here, 
now we could pretty much go ahead and make use of these particular states and functions over there in order to set the actual state. So if you take a look at the component, this is what it looks like right now. We have passed in multiple props there to our form. Now our job is to go ahead and accept those props up over here. So accepting props is simple. You could either say props here, but saying that would mean that whenever you have to refer to these particular states, you have to say props dot to do and props dot to do list. So it's better if we destructure those props right up over here itself. So here I will make use of curly brackets and I would destructure all the props which we have passed from here, which are to do, set to do, so on and so forth. So let's pass them over here. So to do, set to do, then the to do list as well as the set to do list. Okay, so now once everything is being passed here, we are pretty much good to go. So now once we have access to all of these things over here, we could finally start working on making the input field functional. So first of all, let's go ahead and assign this to do state to the value of this input field. So I would say value equals nothing but that's going to be to do. And along with it, let's also add an on change method to this as well. So I would say on change equals and let's say that method is going to be or that function is going to be handle change. So let's go ahead and write that handle change function right up over here. So let's go inside this particular function itself. And I would say const that's going to be handle change. And this is going to accept an event. So let's call this thing as event. And here, first of all, what we wish to do is that whenever we get the event, we need to get the value of the input field by saying event dot target dot value. And once we get that value, we need to make use of the set to do function here in order to set the to do. So here I would say set to do and simply pass in event dot target dot value. Okay, so once that thing is done, let's see if our input field would work. So right now I'll go back here and I would try to type something in let's say dinner and we are able to type that thing in over here and if you want to test if this thing is really bound to the input field you could actually go ahead and you could try to console log the value of to do so i would say console.log let's log in to do so if we do that if we go back here and if i go to inspect go to the console right here so if i do dinner here as you can see it's currently working so once it's working, now let's go ahead and work on submitting this value. So in order to submit this particular value, I'll go back to VS Code. And whenever we want to submit a value, what we essentially do is that we capture this particular value inside the to do and we add it to the to do list. And this should happen whenever we submit the form. So in order to submit the form to this particular button, I need to add the type as submit. And whenever the form is submitted, we need to get the data from the to do and add it to the to do list. So here I would say form on submit and I would add a method over here or a function over here. And let's call that function as handle submit and let's design that handle submit function now. So in order to add that handle submit, I'll simply add it over here. So I would say cons handle submit. This is also going to accept an event. So I would say handle submit equals event. Make use of the arrow syntax. And right up over here, what we are going to do is that we are going to add in the to do item to the to do list. Now, in the previous case where we have created a to do list application, we have made use of the temporary array to save the current to do list into that array. And then we have made use of the set to do list to set the state. However, in this case, we are going to do something different. So here, what we are going to do is that I'm going to say set to do list. And whenever inside the to do list, you want to add a new item. First of all, you need to get the old to do list. So whenever you want to get the old to do list as well as add a new item, what you simply do is that in order to get the initial items inside the to do list, you say dot dot dot, then you say to do list. So what this does is that first of all, it will take all the items inside the to do list and add it up to the array. So as this is an array, I need to enclose this in square brackets. So now this becomes a part of our array. 
and these dots here are nothing but they are the spread operator and what they do is that they spread the array elements across and after doing that the next set of thing which I want to add here is that I want to add a new to do item which is nothing but to do here so if I simply do to do here a to do item would be added up over here but the problem with using this approach is that whatever to do list item you're creating wouldn't have a unique ID. But for now, we won't worry about that. We will simply go ahead and simply paste up the to do item here. So let's simply save that. So what this line of code essentially means is that you create a new array, which is going to contain the old to do list elements as well as the newly added element, which we have gotten from the input field. So this is what that means. And also whenever you are handling form submission, you want to prevent the default action of form submission. So you would say event dot prevent default. So once you do that, simply save it. And then let's actually log the to-do list to see what's in there. So I would say console.log and that's going to be nothing but to-do list. Okay, so once that thing is done, let's see if it works. So I'll go ahead hit refresh, go to inspect, go to the console right here. And let's say I add an item dinner. So currently it's giving me an empty array. And if I type in another item like lunch, if I click on add, it's adding dinner. And if I add something like homework, it's actually showing me dinner and lunch. And this is because we are actually console logging this in handle submit. And what happens is that whenever we go ahead and add this, the last element won't be displayed because this thing is actually rendered earlier. So don't worry about that. The items are being added. It's simply just that they are not being shown here because this thing is rendered before. Okay, so that means now our to-do list application is working partially. And now the next thing which we need to work on is to go ahead and display all of those to do list items inside a list. So right now we are logging the to do list items inside the console. But in the upcoming lecture, let's go ahead and work on displaying them up over here. So we are going to learn how to do that in the next lecture. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.